Ahaye by Hashem, Yeshua HaMashiach, Shabbat Shalom, brothers, sisters, and sojourners of Israel. This is Dr. Ephraim. Today's date is September 18th, 2020. And clearly, if you're listening to the sound of my voice, you were blessed to see another day. And all praise is due to the Most High. Okay, uh, today's lesson on this Shabbat um, is one I've been wanting to kind of tackle for a while. Uh, the title is Black on Black Crime is really... Ephraim versus Judah historical conflict broken down all right and I know a lot of people have a issue with that term black on black crime but I, 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 I worded it that way specifically for a reason to for impact okay um, now with today's lesson on this Shabbat I'm giving my personal hypothesis contextually looking at the historical conflict between black people and how it directly ties in with the conflict and separation between the northern and southern kingdoms kingdoms of Israel referred to as Ephraim and Judah respectfully this separation and beef between the two kingdoms which took place long before the transatlantic dropped us off to the shores of North America the Caribbean and all throughout Central and South America but when placed in context it does a lot to help explain why Negroes just can't seem to get along fundamentally agree on anything and are divided now more than ever. Chuck D once said, the hater taught hate, that's why we gang banging. But for us, it goes back much further and deeper than that. And while Willie Lynch's making of a slave process did contribute to Negroes becoming even further divided because it injected something totally new for us to hate on each other with. And that would be the color of our skin, i.e. light skinned versus dark skin. Great. Another versus for black people as if we needed anything else. Right. And it doesn't matter if Willie Lynch was a real person, fictional, whatever the case may be. The bottom line is it does not take away from the very real and factual contents of that letter bottom line but as usual with anything we just want to find a way to argue and go against okay so we tend to like to romanticize and fantasize about the life we had before slavery how we were kings queens free and prosperous etc etc and while some of that is partly true the reality is the life our ancestors actually lived because of their disobedience to the laws, statutes and commandments given to us by the Most High, participating in idolatry, etc. It is a much starker contrast to that generally held belief and narrative. So we point, we point to the lowest hanging fruit. Yeah, the slave master taught us how to hate each other. That's that's, you know, really, that's the lowest hanging fruit. And again, they did contribute. But the truth is, as a people, we found ourselves enslaved so much that in Jeremiah 2.14, he openly pondered if the children of Israel were born to be slaves. We were always hated. This isn't anything new for us. Like, oh, why did they hate us so much? When they brought us over here, why did they hate us? This isn't anything new for us. Our land is always being invaded. Other nations were always jealous of the children of Israel. And one need not look any further than all of the invasions and captivities we suffered under the Assyrians, who thought it a good idea to do away with the Hebrew language, language and replace it with Aramaic. The Babylonians, the Greeks, the Romans, Arab Muslims, Hermetic Africans, yeah, the ones who actually traded with Europeans and sold Hebrew Israelites into slavery, not other Africans. Yeah, them. The Most High said our foot would not have rest. And to this day, the latter is essentially true. The Romans hated us so much, not, o not only did they destroy Jerusalem as prophesied by Yeshua HaMashiach in Matthew 24 and 2, but they went as far as to change the name of Judea 
to Palestine to take away any Jewish connotation to the land and region. Historically, if you look at the conflicts between different black groups and organizations, I don't care if it's Crips versus Bloods, Gangster Disciples versus Black Disciples, Haitians versus Dominicans, Yorubans versus Igbos, or the break off and separation of the 5% nation of gods and earths from the nation of Islam. The truth further is that when our ancestors were brought over here and all throughout the transatlantic, they brought with them the spirit of division. And this division was manipulated and cultivated by slave masters, yes. And when they started procreating with slave women, creating mulattoes or light-skinned blacks, treating and making them feel better and superior to the darker slaves. A lot of brothers and sisters incorrectly claim to be from the tribe of Judah, when in reality, many of us are actually from the kingdom of Judah and could very well be from Benjamin. Because remember, Judah and Benjamin makes up the southern kingdom, okay? And the 10 tribes that fell under the Assyrian deportation all make up the northern kingdom. See, that's who Christ was sent here for. And he told us as such in Matthew 15 and 24, when he said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. And he told his disciples not to go anywhere near the Samaritans or Gentiles in Matthew 10 and 5. Clearly, Ephraim or the house of Israel, as it's mostly called, was not included in that. So this false notion and narrative, I want to kill it right now, that Ephraim was somehow cut off and made into Gentiles, which is just ridiculous. But the blatant ignorance of that and the lack of understanding for scripture is exactly why you shouldn't be listening to a bunch of different people permeating your spirit, a bunch of foolishness and about things with the most high when they have no idea or they know not. And that's further why I don't allow any and everything and anybody to be posting whatever they want it, want on my platforms. Y'all must really not know how the Most High feels about Ephraim, who Joshua, you know, the one who took Moses' place, is from. Okay? He, the Most High, like any loving parent, got angry with Ephraim as a kingdom. Okay? And essentially put them on time out. Same as Judah, but not Ephraim the man. So for those trying to speak down on Ephraim, I'll just let the Most High tell you exactly how he feels about Ephraim and why Ephraim and the descendants of Ephraim, many are still favored right now today. All right. And here we go. OK, because my thing is, you know, you can you can say whatever, but that doesn't make it true. Right. You can believe whatever, but that doesn't make it true. When you say something, you have to have the spirit of understanding. See, in Jeremiah 31 and 20, the Most High tells you Ephraim is his dear son, the child in whom he delights. Y'all better knock it off with Ephraim. And I'm E1B1A7A all day, tribe of Ephraim. The Most High said his heart yearns for him. And he has great compassion for him. Okay? So be very careful about the things you speak when you don't really know what you're talking about. Okay? And that's just it. So, throughout their history in the Promised Land, the children of Israel struggled with conflict among the tribes. This disunity went back all the way to the patriarch Jacob, who presided over a house divided. And this is why Yeshua HaMashiach said in Mark 3.25, And if a house be divided, that house cannot stand. There's a name for this division that was rampant and still relevant to this day among the various different nations and tribes in Africa. And the twelve tribes of Israel, fourteen counting Ephraim and Manasseh, was no different. And that word is called tribalism. 
in lay terms, tribalism is when you couldn't care less about anyone that's not in your tribe, period. F you, no love shown, watch out. That's it. Tribalism stripped all the way down. That's tribalism. If they're not in your tribe, F them. And that's basically it. It was very common for certain African tribes to capture other Africans from different tribes and enslave them. This is historical fact. So with our Negro ancestors that were dropped off all over the transatlantic came the spirit of division, discord, conflict, and animosity of Ephraim versus Judah that we are still going through right now, black people, to this day. So how did this beef start? Huh? Ephraim versus Judah. The northern versus the southern kingdom. Let's get into it. The animosity among the brothers continued in the time of the judges. Benjamin took up arms against the other tribes. Israel's first king, Saul, was the tribe of Benjamin. When David was crowned king, David was from the tribe of Judah. The Benjamites rebelled. After a long war, David succeeded in uniting all 12 tribes. Okay. Absalom set up his throne in Hebron, the site of the former capital. A later revolt was led by a man named Sheba against David and the tribe of Judah. The reign of David's son Solomon saw more unrest when one of the king's servants, Jeroboam, rebelled. Jeroboam was on the king's errand when he met the prophet Ahijah, who told him that God was going to give him authority over ten of the twelve tribes of Israel. God's reason for the division of the kingdom was definitive, because they have forsaken me and have not walked in my ways. However, God promised that David's dynasty would continue, albeit over a much smaller kingdom. For the sake of God's covenant with David and for the sake of Jerusalem, God's chosen city. When Solomon learned of the prophecy, he sought to kill Jeroboam, who fled to Egypt for sanctuary. After Solomon's death, his son Rehoboam was set to become the next king. But Jeroboam returned from Egypt and led a group of people to confront Rehoboam with the demand for a lighter tax burden. When Rehoboam refused the demand, ten of the tribes rejected Rehoboam and David's dynasty and Ahijah's prophecy was fulfilled. Only Judah and Benjamin remained loyal to, the, to King Rehoboam. The northern tribes crowned Jeroboam as their king. Rehoboam made plans to mount an assault on the rebel tribes, but the Lord prevented him from taking that action. Meanwhile, Jeroboam further consolidated his power by instituting a form of calf worship unique to his kingdom and declaring that pilgrimage, pil that he, he declared that pilgrimage to Jerusalem were unnecessary. Thus, the people of the northern tribes would have no contact with the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. And see, my people, this is what we're listening to. This was the start of everything that we are experiencing and going through right now with the, the spirit of division among our people and why we can't ag agree, we can't get along, we're all over the place. This seed was planted long before our slavery in America. This is what I'm reading to you right now. This is my hypothesis. I'm not stating this as fact, but this is what I really, really believe with every fiber of my being. So let us continue. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. 1 Kings 12 and 19. The northern kingdom, also called the house of Israel, whom Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach came back for, were not Gentiles, okay, in scripture. And the southern kingdom is called Judah, as we all know. But from the divine viewpoint, the division was a judgment on not keeping God's commandments, specific, specifically the commands prohibiting idolatry, okay? From a human viewpoint, the division was the result of tribal discord uh, and political unrest. 
The principle is that sin brings division. But never fret or fear because see the most high is most gracious and merciful. And in his word he promises that the two kingdoms will reunite. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And it says in Isaiah 11 and 13, Ephraim's jealousy will vanish and Judah's enemies will be destroyed. Ephraim will not be jealous of Judah, nor Judah hostile towards Ephraim. Okay. And so when we look at what the Most High said, his word is the same then as it is today. And when the Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, Christ Jesus reigns in his millennial kingdom, all hostility, jealousy, and conflict among the tribes will be put to rest. So if you don't believe that Yeshua HaMashiach is who he says he is, that's on you. I, 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 I really don't see how you could be one of the remnant that will be returned to the Most High if you don't believe his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, who was, who was prophesied to come here. But that's a whole other thing. I'm not going to get into that. There are a lot of Hebrew brothers and sisters whom I vehemently disagree with. And I won't fool with the fellowship with them. And scripture backs this in many instances. All right? 1 Corinthians 10 and 20 says, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Period. In any color or race, I can't and will not do that. Sorry, not sorry. Ephesians 5 and 11 says, And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Reprove means to chastise, reprimand, scold, rebuke. 2 Thessalonians 3, 14 and 15 says, And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So I may not fellowship with you all, but you're still my brothers and sisters, you know, and there it is there, you know, but uh, all things considered, uh, I've given you all a really sound hypothesis on this black on black conflict we've been having for so long. Um, and it definitely give you all something to think about, you know, all praise due to the most high, high yeah. and as I said, in the latter part of the lesson, you know, um, it doesn't look or feel like it, but we will come back together. Ephraim and Judah will come back together. And I believe that with every fiber of my being. Now, whether that happens in our lifetime or not, I really can't speak to. Um, but I wanted to tackle this for a while. And, um, you know, to the, to, the, to the best of each of you, your ability, you know, let's get back to the covenant. Let's get back to doing what we're supposed to do. Um, yeah, are we, are we divided? Yes. Uh, will we remain divided? Probably so, yes. But, you know, let's chop away bit by bit, right? And hopefully this lesson was um, was a, a value to each of you. And uh, just to give you a, a quick uh, preview of what to expect and what I'm working on, and this is really, to me, next to the, the, the comprehensive E1B1A video I did back in 2014, whatever it was, um this this presentation was was right right up there and it's the um uh presentation on haplogroup group d um my hypothesis on the asians being of joktan the children of joktan haplogroup group d um and that's more than halfway finished so hopefully i should have that uh by the next shabbat but i wanted to i don't know how long that's going to be i mean i tried to you know curtail it keep it short but the bottom line is I have to include all of the information. So however long it is, it is, but I, you know, I'm trying to keep it in mind. I don't want it, you know, two and three hours, but, um, I have to present my hypothesis and, and how I, how I arrived at that conclusion, you know, so you guys will understand, um, you know, what's going on with that. So hopefully I'll have that on the next Shabbat and it's about haplogroup group D, uh, the children of Joktan, 
uh, the Asians. All right. So that being said, um, that's it for this lesson. Again, I hope you all got something from it. Uh, and lastly, let me just say again for possible penetration. Uh, many of you who come to you know my page or my my any of my videos, I don't respond to each and every one. I can't. Um, I give it and so enough of my time as it is in these lessons and things of that nature. So, and if you have the wrong spirit, if you come at me disrespectfully, you know, I don't, I don't even, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to curse you out or anything like that. You'll just be blocked and I'm going to keep it moving because I don't, I don't have time. Um, you know, and that's just what it is. So, um, I love all those that love me. So, uh, with that being said, this is Dr. Ephraim. Hope y'all, I hope you all have a blessed, uh, Shabbat. And I'm signing off until next time saying hi by Yeshim, Yeshua HaMashiach. Shalom.